Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. I'm going away for a few days, so I'm going to do some messing about with this tank. Um, so I've already done my water change. Don't worry, I haven't filmed it for you. I've just noticed though that the lights are on. I've got one on blues and one on normal whites. Does that look better than normal? What do you think? That. Or that. Or can you not see anything because of the glare? Anyway, the main thing I'm going to do uh, is a job that I've been meaning to do for weeks and weeks but never quite got around to. So as you know, planted this tank. The plants are doing all right. I mean, a tiny little bit of algae growth. Um, but I want to add CO2 to this. And the way I want to do it is to keep it all in the sump. Uh, so I've been doing lots of reading about how you would do that. So generally you would get your CO2 in your source. And you either have it in line where it's part of a, the filter return or something like that. Or you have some kind of diffuser or atomizer or something like that. But what I'm planning on doing is putting it in here. Uh, and using the diffuser that I've got. But having the CO2 come out at the intake of the pump. So as the pump will suck in the CO2 bubbles, smash them to pieces and dissipate them even more and even better within the tank. Because the goal with CO2 is to get the aquarium water to absorb that CO2. So when they use atomizers or um, diffusers, the idea is to get the bubbles as small as possible. So as there's more surface area there and the water can absorb um, that as the bubbles rise because if you just let the bubbles out and the bubbles rise to the top and they pop then that's that gas escaping out into the air rather than the water so that's my plan and that's my thinking so I shall get on and do that um, go and grab the stuff after an exhaustive search for the house I finally found my little box of CO2 stuff so we've got the things that we'll need um, one canister of CO2. Now this is just uh, welders, carbon dioxide. Doesn't matter what you get as long as it's pure CO2. Um, and the reason I've used this rather than a fire extinguisher or something like that is I happen to have um, this type of regulator which is off of a JBL kit which is actually really good. Um, it's very well made, very well um, reviewed and respected should you say. So what you would normally get in this type of system you see them with the two gauges, one which shows you the, the pressure in the bottle which can help you tell how much is left and one which shows you the pressure that's being output. Um, 30 or 40 quid off eBay or Amazon or up to hundreds of pounds depending on how good of a gauge you want. Even though they've got two gauges they're not necessarily dual stage because you'll hear that mentioned a lot uh, and that's something that's Dual stage is really to prevent things like end of tank dump, they call it, when you get to the bottom of a, a fire extinguisher or whatever it is, and you're nearing empty, and for whatever reason there's lots of arguments about what it is that causes it, when it gets to that certain point it's either can't be held, the pressure can't be held and it just dumps the rest of it into the tank. It's never happened to me, I've not been using CO2 that long, but it's never happened to me and it's never happened to anyone that I've spoken to, it's always happened to someone that you've heard about it or it's a friend of a friend or whatever it might be. I'm also not really that concerned about it because like I said earlier, the idea is to get the bubbles into the water for a long enough time that it can be absorbed. So if you just whack this on full and let it into your tank, it's just going to go straight out into the atmosphere. So I'm not sure I agree with that. But anyway, we've got our tank, we've got our regulator, that's the two most important bits. From there, we could pretty much, because the regulator's also got a needle valve on it, a needle valve, we'll say that properly, um, that you can turn and let the gas out. You could just set that how you want it, have a bit of air line, run that into your tank and away you go, you'd be fine. But we've got some extra stages. I've got a solenoid, uh, which means I can hook it up to a timer so as I can use it when the lights are on rather than when the lights are off and I've got a bubble counter which lets me count, see a visible reference as to how quickly it's going because obviously I don't have any gauges here 
Um, so I can count the amount of bubbles and I know how much I'll want. Um, generally, on a tank that size, I probably want probably about five bubbles a second, but it's important when you first start CO2, you start very low and then scale up um, so you can monitor for any changes. And one of the ways that will help you monitor it is, where is it? Something like this. The, again, these come in various guises. It's a drop checker. And um, so you put a little bit of this liquid in here and you can get various different brands. Uh, and it changes color depending on the pH, basically. So you know when you're in the right range, um, everything's happy. If you go, I can't remember what the colors are now on this one. I think it's blue, yellow, and red, or green. Um, but yeah, it just gives you a quick, I can see that, make sure everything's happy. Um, and on the other end, that's my little diffuser. Which is not going to focus on. You'll just have to take my word for it, that's funky. Basically it comes in down here, comes up, spirals round and round and round, and then goes through a ceramic disc, which gives the even finer bubbles. So my plan is that this goes directly underneath the pump intake, so the bubbles come out of here into the pump, smashed by the impeller, even more contact time in the water, smaller bubbles, and then dissipated through the tank. So, that's it. Um, one thing that's worth talking about, I was told you had to have special CO2 tubing, and it had to be pressurised, or, or it had to be rated for a certain pressure. Um, but for a long time now I've just been using normal airline tubing and I can't see any difference whatsoever. So let me know in the comments if there's a reason that I shouldn't be doing that. Um, but yeah, because I can't figure it out. Anyway, let's get on with installing this. There we go, that's it set up. So we've got the regulator up here a bit. Let's see if we can move that. Regulator's here, into the solenoid valve, into the bubble counter, so I can see the bubbles here. Up and over, into the sump, and I've got the diffuser here, just on the edge of the pump intake. And no bubbles are escaping here because they're all being sucked up the intake tube. And being spat out up there. So something's not quite right because that's way more bubbles than I'm actually putting in. And there's quite a lot of noise. So I'm going to take this away from there. You can see the bubbles that are actually coming out. It's just a fine mist. But if I let the intake take them. seems to be making them bigger rather than smaller. Hmm. So anyway, it's set up. It's running, it's working, so we're at what is that? How many bubbles per second is that? That's maybe three or four bubbles per second at the moment. settle down if I turn it down a little bit. But as I said, I'm going away so I'm going to turn it off completely for the moment and we'll figure this out when I come back. So what do you think? Is there another way I should be doing this? Obviously I could run the line into the tank itself. It's quite a deep tank so I could put it all the way to the bottom there and let it uh, run as a normal CO2 system. 
Uh, is there something else I could or should be doing? Um, I don't know. So I'm, I'm quite new to CO2 in general, so I don't know everything, obviously. If you've got any tips, please let me know in the comments. If this is your first time here, give me a subscribe. That would be really helpful. And thanks for watching. Yeah, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.